Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. As of 2015, marriage equality is now the law of the land in the United States. Don't ask, don't tell is a thing of the past, and LGBTQ representations are in the movies, television, and social media. Despite these milestones, teenage bullying resulting in deaths due to suicide is being documented throughout the country. Russell Baptist, author of Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to Other Men, asked to these teenagers, do they die in vain? Is that attraction a lifestyle or a real, authentic life? Russell's book is written as a provocative roadmap about male same-sex attraction, along with his findings that this is a real culture. Russell Baptist, LCSW, is a licensed mental health professional, experienced providing therapy, supportive counseling to individuals and groups throughout New York City, Atlanta, Los Angeles, and Washington, a graduate of Texas College and Columbia University, a proven leader establishing programs and organizations that affected change in people's lives. He served on the board of directors for gay men of African descent, a former board chairman of the Unity for Fellowship Church Movement. Currently, he is president of ANS Consulting Services and an adjunct professor at Columbia University School of Social Work. Russell Baptist, author of Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to Other Men, is our guest on This Week in America. Russell, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rick. And it's good to be on This Week in America. Well, it's such an important topic. And let's start with the the motivation. Why did you feel it was necessary? And you've got decades of experience in dealing with these issues. Why did you feel this book was important to write at this time? Well, I... Suicides resulting in bullying really brought it to my attention. A few uh, a few years ago, there were uh, media reports all over the place about suicides coming to light. And just looking at the t- statistics, I mean, do you, did you know that over 80% of the suicides, teenage suicides, are caused due to bullying? And most of them are, are uh, happen because... Um, these bullies accuse uh, the um, the youth of homosexuality and then the pressure of it all, uh, being gay and uh, and children and kids not understanding. Well, what does that mean? I said, let me address it. Let me find out. Let me provide some information to the larger audience so that maybe we can reduce some of this. As a matter of fact, 29 states in America are still discriminating against uh, gay and lesbian uh, LGBTQ uh, people. Um, you know, if you're reported that you're LGBTQ, you can lose your job. You can lose benefits. Uh, so I wanted to address these issues through my book, Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Attracted to Other Men. It's interesting because maybe we think we've come so far, and yet you're saying we really haven't, have we? No, we haven't. I mean, we really haven't. It, even though we now see, um, you know, don't ask, don't tell is a thing of the past. Uh, we, we, we are represented. And when I say we, LGBTQ people are represented in movies and, and the like, but there is still, there are still the phobias. The phobias are still happening. And I think that uh, books like this can address some of these issues. I'm talking to three basic audiences here. I'm really speaking with the uh, with the child that's being bullied, um, who may be questioning their own sexuality. I'm also speaking to the parent that want to be supportive of their child who might be in a special circumstance. And I want to talk to the adults who are already LGBTQ and remind them of their responsibility to help uh, youth growing up. With us on This Week in America is Russell Baptist, a licensed clinical social worker, talking about his book, Adam and Steve. Once you decide to write the book, you finish the book, you, you now have to have a title that stands out among so many out there uh, that are on the market right now. Talk about the title, how you came up with this name, because it does grab your attention. Right. Well, that, that is a good question. Um, you know, re- religion, the conservative view uh, 
really made me write the title the way I wrote it, Adam and Steve. You know, you always hear when, um, especially in in the conservative world around homophobia, you hear, oh, the Bible says Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve. Well, I wanted to turn it on his head and say Adam and Steve, you know, and there yes. may be even an Eve and an Alice. But for now, Adam and Steve, the rules for men attracted to, to other men. I wanted it to uh, to grab you in that way. The book is available, of course, wherever you'll find books. I'll direct you to authorreputationpress.com. We've got a link on our website that you can go get information on Russell's book and order Russell's book there as well. You sort of touched on this, but I want to go back and talk about who the book is designed for because this really is a book that everybody, whether you're a teen, whether you're an adult, whether you're a parent or even a friend of someone, this really is beneficial, isn't it? It really is. It really is. It's it's a roadmap. It's loaded with information. For example, I, I break the book out into five different chapters, and they're just chapters about life in general. Um, I I wanted to establish, I, I am establishing that same-sex attraction, LGBTQ issues uh, is not a lifestyle, it's a culture. And with its own language, with its own uh, uh, norms and and processes. With us on the program, Russell Baptist talking about his book, Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to Other Men. Once you start this project, and this is, is a very thorough, incisive project, how long did it take you to, to put this book together and get it published? Well, it was, it was a process, and it was a, a good four year process. What I, you know, and I, I say four years in, in collecting all of the information I needed to collect, but 20 years in the making because I've traveled around the country and I have, uh, yeah, I'm a licensed psychotherapist. And so I've had a private practice for many, many years, uh, in addition to doing other things like, uh, being a professor. And so I've had an opportunity to travel around the country and I've also had an opportunity to sit and interview, uh, especially gay men, and uh, to just talk about all of their experiences. I said to myself, well, I have a lot of information. And um, so I collected some stories, some anecdotal information, but I also uh, wanted to do my research and make sure that everything that I included in the book uh, was also factual as well as well as anecdotal. So I wanted to really put together something really comprehensive and make it fun, uh, not just an, a boring academic book. So as a result, um, that process took about four years, and here we are, self-published and um, author represented press took it on, and I'm off to the races. Well, and it's such an important book to get out into the community, and we're talking about the process of doing that as well as a, a very important message in Russell's book, Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to, to Other Men. Talk about that process in writing because you have a lot of information there, but this is not just a book where you sit and read information. You present it in such a way that it, it, it flows, it makes sense. It's, it's a read that, uh, that people will go through and be, be able to understand. Talk about not just relaying information, but being a writer so, that, so this will be an inviting form and, and helpful to people. That had to be a delicate balance, didn't it? It was, it was, and what to include. I mean, when we're talking yes. about, when I'm when we're talking about, you know, establishing a culture of, of, of same-sex attraction, and I like to call it same-sex attraction, um, I, the term gay and lesbian are becoming a thing of the past. Language is just getting so, uh, moving so fast that what we have now can be outdated tomorrow. And so language was very important for me uh, in this in uh, in this process of writing, I wanted to so in order to establish a culture, what I wanted to do was first talk about well, how do you mature? So uh, just to talk about the maturity status of uh, growing up uh, as a as a gay man or same sex attracted man, uh, there are certain stages in life that you go through, and I talk about these stages as the neophyte stage. The, um, the ingenue stage, the supernova stage, um, the iconoclast stage, and the legacy stage. And those are different periods in people's lives from 
from beyond teenage, from, from before teenage, being a teenager, all the way up until 80 years old. I, I, you constantly come out in life. I wanted to talk about that. Uh, even talking about understanding your own power. Um, so I really went through a painstaking process to make it fun and to make it a little, uh, to make it easy to read where you can just jump into a chapter. You don't have to read this book uh, page one to page 232. You can jump around the topics that you choose. Name a topic and it's in the book. And the book is Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to Other Men. Russell Baptist, licensed clinical social worker, is the author and our guest on the program. Book available at authorreputationpress.com, Amazon, the usual places. Link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. How does the book address growing up as a gay man? How do you focus on that? Well, that's, um, that's you know, in the, in the first chapter, the maturity status, I talk about, uh, I talk about how, how it is to first find out that maybe you're not acting like, maybe you're not like the other kids in the classroom and you hear it from adults. And that's when, that's when the little kids begin to hear it. Uh, there's uh, a small children and teenagers begin to hear, oh, you're not acting like your brother acted. Oh, your father says you must play with this. Uh, why are you playing with dolls? Or, you know, I hear, um, okay, so you don't want to play sports, but you want to, um, you want to have, you want to be, um, you want to play with the girls. Um, so we, we talk about all of those uh, issues growing up. We talk about how a family member's role is so important, especially if, a, if your child, if your son is coming home and says he's being bullied, find out what's happening and uh, find out how you can reinforce um, your child's own internal strengths. Uh, and a way you can do that is uh, really taking a page out of the book and just looking at uh, the different stages that you'll go through. You're not alone. Children who are same-sex attracted, I want you to know, you're not alone. And you're not, the book is, addresses so many issues for the three different groups that Russell talked about. The book is Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Were Attracted to Other Men. How do you handle issues like religion? We hear conversion <laughs> therapy brought up, male-to-male -male relationships. How do you handle those? Well, that is, that is, um, it certainly is addressed in this book. And in, in, in one of my sections called Good Living and Understanding Your Power, we talk about conversion therapy. Conversion therapy, and I, you know, I've been hearing about it for years and in its different forms. Conversion therapy says that, oh, we, uh, you're, you are growing up to be attracted to men. You are a gay man. What we're going to do is throw you in the closet and make sure we pray the gayness out of you. Yes. Or we're going to take you to a retreat and a resort and we're going to show you all things that men are supposed to be able to do. And that way you won't be attracted to other men anymore. It was bogus. It never worked. Freud even talked about it. Freud even learned to accept, Sigmund Freud even learned to accept it a hundred years ago uh, when he penned a letter to mother and son. He even knew during his time that uh, same-sex attracting was not something that you are, that's a style, it's something that you are born with. In my book, about, in the last chapter of the book, we talk, we, I call it the HBTQ rules, the history of the Bible, Torah, and Quran, and where I had a lot of um, patients and clients uh, in my private practice who were gay men, who were extremely religious, who went to church, who went to synagogue, who went to mosque, and did not understand that their sexuality, uh, why was their sexuality in conflict? Well, I address it in this book. I take about five chapters uh, from the uh, from the New Testament, Old Testament, and Torah, and um, and even from the Quran, and uh, highlight uh, same sex attraction, which are in those books. I told you this book was comprehensive. I mean, you've really covered all of the angles. Such an excellent job in the book, Adam and Steve, by Russell Baptist, our guest in the program. 
Do you have any role models, famous figures included in Adam and Steve? And if so, tell us how you you work that into the book. Right. Uh, yes, I did in 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 the um, in in one of my chapters in the Good Living and Understanding Your Power. I talk about uh, living your truth. I talk about coming out. We talk about. Uh, talent and uh, talk about how not to be defined by who you sleep with. And so in the, in the good living and understanding your power, uh, I use stories of famous, uh, same famous gay men, such as Bayard Ruskin uh, on authority. He is the man who was behind Martin Luther King's, I have a dream speech. And very few people know that because he was written out of the history books for a time, because he was a gay man. Um, there was a movie out a few years ago called The English Patient. Uh, and The English Patient was a very big movie. It won all kinds of, um, won all kinds of Oscars and awards. Well, it was, the movie was about a straight man, but in real life, that man was Laszlo Armsley, and he was a gay man. And, um, the movie turned him into a straight man and turned him, and instead of, uh, Laszlo Armsley was slept with a prince who funded his adventures all through life. And no one knew, no one knew, um, no one would know this, but it is in the book. Uh, we, we talk about Laszlo Armsley, talk about Farley Granger, an actor, talk about James Baldwin, um, a famous writer. Uh, so they're all in the book. I even have something about a president in the book. Um, Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, do, did you know that uh, he slept with three men throughout his lifetime? And um, it's very provocative. So that's in the book as well. Okay, boy, there's so much there. Adam and Stephen, the time is going by so quickly. It's such an important topic. How about sex? Is sex included in your book? Everybody, everybody, that's the question. Yes. Sex is definitely <laughs> included in the book, and it is included in, a, and again, uh, we do this anecdotally, and we do this fact-based. For example, and talk about the parts of the body. Talk about penises and how they are connected to your body and the three parts of it and what it's used for. Uh, I talk about... Um, domestic violence in the community. I talk about um, HIV AIDS. I talk about all kinds of issues around sex, including um, how to have safe sex um, and S and M and triple L's and three ways and orgies and all of that great stuff is is mixed in, but. It has a meaning and it has a, it has a, every, each chapter has a meaning behind it. And it's not just salacious. It makes a point. A couple of minutes left. If you had to summarize a takeaway, what you hope people get out of you reading the book, Adam and Steve, the rules for men uh, attracted to other men, what would that be? What is the takeaway you hope that when we finish something we learn? <laughs> Well, I, uh, I think I can sum that up in, a, in the anthem that I was taken from a television show, but it, we call it the MAM anthem because MAM is men attracted to other men or males attracted to other males. And uh, the anthem goes like this. We are quicksilver, a fleeting shadow, a distant sound. Our home has no boundaries beyond in which we cannot pass. We live in a flash of color in music, in fashion, in finance, in sports, and in the great works of art. We live on the wind, in the sparkle of a star. We are his children, we are her children, the chosen ones. We are the males who are attracted to other males. That's what I want everybody to get out of the book. Boy, that's powerful, and that sums it up. Uh, let me ask you one more question. What would life have been like for you if you would have had something similar to Adam and Steve, the rules for men who are attracted to other men? How helpful would this have been to you? Well, you know, I think my life would have been markedly different in another kind of way. I came out when I was about 18, but I came out, but as you will find out, as I have in my book, coming out is a process that you do every day. Yes. But um, at, at 18, it was really important for me 
to uh, to say that um, you know what I I uh, I I thought I was the only one who was a gay man in the world. I thought I was alone and by myself, and I wasn't bullied, but I could have been, and I could have been, uh, and I would not have known anywhere to go. Now you have a place to go. Adam and Steve is the book, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to Other Men. The author is Russell Baptist, licensed clinical social worker with over 25 years experience working in the mental health profession. Russell, a pleasure having you on the program. The book's available, by, by the way, at authorreputationpress.com and Amazon, the usual places. Link onto our website to get more information. Uh, a job well done. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Well, thank you so much, Rick. It has been our pleasure. Our guest is Russell Baptist. The book is Adam and Steve, The Rules for Men Who Are Attracted to Other Men. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.